This anime season was whack. It had action, drama, romance, meetings. It was so good that I forgot to go study for my exams. So now that school's out, what's a better way to spend my time than making a subjectively good tier list on the internet? How do I make this? Starting off with Kaiju number 8, the hot new shonen on the block with crazy animations and, uh, this. Basically, you got a goofy -a guy named Kafka who cleans up the city after good old Godzilla attacks and wants to join the defense force to reunite with his childhood friend Mina to marry, to kiss, to punch, to stand by her side. What the heck? But then, you won't believe it, he then turns into a kaiju, like the enemy! So he's kinda cooked. It's the new shonen of the season, with some of the better animation from Production IG, and the comedy honestly adds to the list of check marks. Apparently the manga falls off, but manga readers are wrong half the time, so we're gonna pretend like they don't exist and give it S tier. But now imagine a world where 7G turned everything upside down. You have talking animals, zombies, parasitic mushrooms, and four girls taking a train to Shibuya to find and reconnect with their friend. Seems legit. Train to the end of the world is what happens when you give a studio too much weed when they're working and create an insane piece of work. It's wacky, it's bonky, it's wholesome when it needs to be, and it's insane the entire time. But once you get used to the world, it becomes such an enjoyable watch. Original animes cooked this season, and this one's really no exception. A tier. Tsukimichi's Moonlit Fantasy second season is honestly more or less the same as the first season. Absolutely myth. There's a lot of characters involved that I don't remember the names of, and it's honestly just more or less just them vibing the entire time. It's the same idea of an overpowered guy who then gets a bunch of girls and then proceeds to absolutely body anyone else in the show. Except I'm a sucker for that, and I think it's very cool. But then I return to my senses and realize what I'm doing with my life, and I turn my isekai brain off and understand that it's actually a B. So now I'm going to turn my isekai brain back on to hype up Mushoku Tensei Season 2 Part 2, where Rudy now goes through his slice of life phase. He marries the girl of his dreams, lives out his life, until- oh. Turning point three. I can't say much without spoiling the show, but let's just say that the final few episodes show why Egg Firm and White Fox came together to create a new studio just to animate the grandfather of Isekai. It also honors Father's Day in the best way possible, just as much as how Gege loves Gojo. Not many other shows deal with dark topics in this fashion, and I wished more shows did. My Isekai brain wants me to put it as an S, but then I get a flashback of having my parents walk in when I watch this show, so then it's moved down to A tier. But back to wholesomeness, Spice and Wolf is the perfect show to watch for a couple, which includes none of you watching. A merchant named Lawrence travels through the land and runs into a furry who's actually the wise wolf Hollow, and then offers her an Uber ride with an IOU. For a story about economics and supply and demand, it has a lot more action than you think. Considering the original from 2008 is still regarded as one of the best shows, the remake has a lot to match up to, and apparently it does. I don't know, I didn't watch the original. Anyways, I finally now understand why there's so many furries in our generation, and I'm excited for the next 12 episodes episodes in Core 2, so a very cautious but optimistic beat here, I'm just waiting for more before I finalize my opinion. The Misfit of Demon King Academy Season 2 Part 2 is a mouthful of words where the season is actually more mouthful than the title. I I don't know what that means. Good old Honest Voldigold is still kind of just a king where no one really thinks he's a king and they just keep underestimating him. Also, there's like a god and dragons and then the show's delayed and then there's more humans and evil king and oh, it's delayed again. I kind of lost a plot last season, so I'm not sure what's going on right now, but I guess he's still a misfit. I might just give it D tier until I maybe rewatch the show entirely again and they gotta stop delaying the show so much. Grandpa and Grandma Turned Young Again is a very descriptive title where Grandpa and Grandma turn young again. They magically eat a golden apple growing on their farm and have the ability to revert back to their 20s. Maybe they get wrapped up in a time traveling plot. Maybe they suddenly realize what they missed out on life. Yeah, but they don't do any of that. It's basically a very wholesome slice of life show about them and their daily lives. It's a great message about living the way you want and showing what a bunch of old guys get up to in Japan. Extremely wholesome, wish there was more, and would highly recommend it if you're an 80 year old man or just someone who enjoys slice of life. It does exactly what you want it to do and it makes sure you enjoy the journey. Gotta give it A tier. Yozakura Family is the other Shonen Jump manga that got adapted this year along with Kaiju number 8, where Tayo, your typical high school boy whose parents died in a car crash, gets kidnapped by a spy and to save himself, marries his childhood crush. What the freak? Except the spy is a crush's brother and all of her siblings are spies, which include a shut-in, a gamer, a furry, a lolly, Walter White, and a cat that can drive a car. Wild. I think the show's still finding its footing just because of how formulaic everything is so far, and I'm sure if I was 12 I'd give it an A, but currently right now, I'll put it at a C until the next 15 episodes air next season. The other popular shonen that's airing right now, um, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, uh, it's called a Demon Slayer. I think they kill like demons or something. We got an arc where they have to level up the main character 
characters, so it's believable when they take down the big bad Michael Jackson. Considering that the arc in the manga is only 8 chapters long, we're getting a lot of filler. But the animation do be pretty and sparkly and cool, and now I forget that they're hiding their slice of life arc so no one finds out about it. It's only 8 episodes, except the 1st, 7th, and 8th episodes are longer than the normal runtime. They probably could have shortened these 3 episodes, but it's almost like they need practice to make 3 more longer episodes when they adapt more of the show. So it's just enjoyable fluff that goes probably somewhere into B for now. Windbreaker is the breakout anime of the season that goes against the wind yet has almost nothing to do with windbreakers. Imagine a bunch of high schoolers that beat the crap out of gangs, adults, kids, other kids, except it's better than Tokyo Revengers. Sakura is a great protagonist who moved into town and has no functioning brain cells other than absolutely violating anyone he fights and getting embarrassed by every single compliment. And with the good cast of side characters from his school and Gojo freaking Satoru reincarnated as the head of the school, it's a must watch for the action scenes alone. Though I don't think we've seen a single teacher yet, which I... I, I don't think they learn anything actually. Its opening is also extremely hype, and I'm giving it S tier and honestly being my favorite anime of the season. Next up is Chillin' in Another World with level 2 super cheap powers. And if you ask if I watched this show because of the opening, no, of course not. That's extremely immature of me and I would never do such a thing. Go Go Loser Ranger on the other hand is about an alien army that lost against the bootleg Power Rangers 10 years ago. But instead of wiping them out, they decided to have the surviving grunts host a fake showdown every Sunday so that the rangers can promote their brand. So I guess capitalism? Except our main guy D, and I'm not kidding, his name is D, does not like it and wants to break free. If you told me that the author of Quintessential Quintuplets wrote this manga, I'd laugh at you and then spit out my water when I realized you're telling me the truth. The animation is solid, the plotline is engaging, the openings and endings are a banger, the Yellow Ranger is kinda hot, the manga is genuinely exciting, but the anime did cut out a lot of it, so I'll have to put this one at A tier. But let's talk about good isekai, such as that time I was reincarnated as a D1 yapper. Slime's season 3 was filled to the brim with no action and only meetings, where they talked for like 6 episodes straight, fought for like 4, and then went back to yapping. Except I enjoy the world building in the show. They actually take time to explain what's going on in the world and showcase all the different moving parts. It's like Civ 6 meets Isekai. Either way, it's still one of my favorite shows to just chill and watch, so I gotta put my boy in M, which stands for meetings. Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night continues a weird tradition of having anime titles where you can't seriously recommend this to your friend because of how stupid it sounds. I'm not even going to talk about this one. But Jellyfish is genuinely a good watch. It pairs an artist, a singer, a professional pianist, and a VTuber together to create a band and also find their identity on who they want to be. Coming from the author of bottom tier Tomozaki-kun, it meant that it was always going to have an interesting premise. I enjoyed the crap out of the show, but the ending came so fast when it definitely could have used more episodes. But in the end, it's a slice of life with music about cute girls doing cute things with drama, and it does it great. While it honestly had potential to be S tier, I think without rose tinted glasses of my own personal bias, it still solidly goes into A tier. And if you didn't have enough girls starting a band, then that's okay, because guess what? There's another one! I know, the genre never dies, though girls band Cry is in every aspect worth the view. Nina Iseri moves to Tokyo looking for university, but then gets swept away after viewing a live performance from Momoka- Momoka Kawa- Momoka Kawa- I can't do this. Momoka Kawa Rangi and then forms a band with her, so I guess she's a college dropout? Even though it's CGI, Toei's animation style makes every movement fluid and natural, and every emotion is completely animated brilliantly because it's CGI. There's really no static frame in the entire show, but instead of looking like something like Miraculous Ladybug, it still has that anime feel to it. The music is great, the plot's well done, and the shots in the show utilize all of CGI to create those crazy scenes. I'm not that hard to get sold on a fantastic music show that doesn't even have an official license out to the West, but I would actually recommend this to someone that's not used to the genre. That's why it goes up into S tier. Bartender Glass of God is the other less famous remake this season behind Spice and Wolf, yet I do think it might be a better show currently. Bartender Ryu Sasakura is offered a job at a five-star hotel, but declines because he's gotta figure out what he's doing with his life. Valid? It's an extremely laid-back slice of life exploring many different side characters and their motives with life, all through bartending. I went in knowing nothing about alcohol, and now I can make myself an entire Long Island iced tea that I bought from the store. Definitely not a fast paced show in any way, but it is really kind of profound as long as you don't fall asleep. I was debating between B tier and A tier, but I think the message of the show is extremely well done, so I'll probably put it in A.
Konosuba comes back with season 3 like it didn't miss a beat. Better than season 2? Worse than the movie? But better than the Megamine spinoff. If you hated season 1, you're not gonna like season 3. If you love season 1, you'll probably like season 3. Absolutely goofy shenanigans. S tier. In last minute, we're gonna throw up Dungeon Meshi or Delicious in Dungeon, even though it started last season but just finished up. It's mainly about a party out in the dungeon cooking monsters while trying to save a group member that's stuck on our lower floor. I mean, there's great relationships in the show, great comedy, and I mean, it's a studio trick anime. Nine times out of ten, you have no idea what's going on, except that it looks good. The second season was also announced, so we'll see how they do then, but for right now, the first season in S tier. You know, I should probably get a life considering how many shows I watched and how many I didn't mention, but there were just a lot of enjoyable shows. I mean, why would I watch a show if I thought it wouldn't be good, you know? It's our first time making a long video, so we have no clue what we're doing, but if you like it, you know, you should like it. Tell us how we did, give us recommendations on what videos we should make, or tell me how wrong I am about my tier list. I'll read all the comments. So yeah, uh, I don't know. Bye!